Hey guys, welcome back. Hey, for a fun Friday video, I thought we would do something completely different. I wanted to uh, take some time and talk about a toy from the 80s that I really enjoyed. And that is the Rubik's Cube. The standard Rubik's Cube measures two and a quarter inch on each side. The puzzle consists of 26 unique miniature cubes, also known as cubies. Each of these include a concealed inward extension that interlocks the other cubes while permitting them to move in different directions. So, I don't know about everyone else, but when I had one of these as a kid, I used to have fun spinning it around and playing with it, but I never quite ever solved it. And I ended up tearing it apart. You can get in here and pop that dude out and then put it back together and snap it in place. So, uh, I just thought it would be kind of interesting to uh, show you how to actually solve one of these things. So part of how we're going to describe this is um, a bit about nomenclature. So the cube, and the, basically the way we're going to solve it is we're going to have an algorithm for each component of the cube. Right? You'll have a, a series of movements where you can move, take one cubie to another spot and move the cubies around. And then, um, so to solve a Rubik's Cube, you basically use a permutation of movements, a sequence of movements that will move the cubies from one position to another. So when you identify a cubie that you want to put into a given position based on the face color, then that's how you go about doing it. And I'll, I'll show you those. It's kind of like an algorithm. So what makes a face in a cube? So the one thing that's static about these is they have like green. This face is green because the centerpiece is green. And this face is orange because the centerpiece is orange. And this is white. This will be the white face. Okay. And the way that I will show on the screen as far as how the algorithm works for any given uh, layer, and that's how we're going to solve it. We're going to solve it in layers. You know, we'll solve one side, and then we'll solve the middle, and then we'll come back and we'll solve the final piece, right? So, but the the section that's facing you, this is the front. This is known as the front. This orange is front because it's facing me. This is the upper layer. This is the down layer is what we'll call it in this video. So the down, this is the bottom or down. This is left and this is right. So in basically when we go through of how to solve, anything that's clockwise is like a, a prime rotation clockwise. And anything that's counterclockwise will be in inverse. I think the term I'll use is inverse. So for instance, this is up and this is inverse up. This is left because it's clockwise. If you were to be facing that side, left, and this is inverse left. This is front because orange is facing me and this is inverse front. So that's that's how we'll describe it. That's how we'll describe the, uh, the permutations of movements to manipulate each side of the cube. Okay, so let's work our way through this thing. Like I said, we're gonna break it down into layers. So we're gonna start with layer one. And I normally always pick layer one to be whichever one's labeled. So since white has the Rubik's cube icon on there, we're gonna start with white. So the first thing you gotta do is create this cross pattern. That's step one to solve layer one. So what we're gonna do is we'll go and find, let's see, so there's blue, there's blue white right here. And we're gonna find the blue side, it's right there. We're gonna do like that and bring it up. So when you, in this step, when you solve for it, you wanna have the faces are lined up. So this, this QB is actually in the correct position right here, because it's blue, blue, white, white, okay? And then we'll go find the next one. There's orange, so see? So up here's white. Remember the face is designated by the, the center QB. So now that's orange, blue is good. I don't know if you guys are getting the wind. I have a lot of wind 
at the game cave today. Uh, let's see. That's fine. There's red. So red's just right there. So all I have to do is turn that around. So red, white, orange, white, blue, red. See, just like that. So we've got our edge pieces completed. So now what we need to do is we need to get the corners for layer one. So first thing we want to do is find which corner we want to start with. So this is red, blue, white. So I'm looking for that corner. Where's red, blue, white? Red, blue, that's not. Red, blue, white. Red, blue, white. It's actually over here on this side. And let's see. The green back where he belongs. And red. Red, blue, white, right there. Okay, so we want to put that red, blue, white. Okay, so this is the starting position for this QB to fix this corner. So basically, the permutation that we use uh, to move these from this position up to here, and you kind of hold it. So this is the red is facing me now. So now red is face. But we're going to use a right inverse. Down inverse, right, down. And as you saw, it jumped right up there. And that's a very common permutation for a couple different things. R inverse, D inverse, R forward is what I call it, or D forward, which is like D clockwise or right side clockwise. Okay, so now we're going to find red, green, and white. So One more to go. And this guy is actually in the position, but his colors are not in the right order, as you can see. So red, green, white. So we're just gonna pull him out. And there you go. So there's layer one. And now we're gonna move on to layer two. Okay, so let's continue on with layer two. Now, when we position the cube to solve for layer two, the layer one that we have already solved for is going to go down. Okay, so this is the right position with this solve component down. And then we just kind of work our way around the cube. And as you can see, we've gotten lucky here. So some of these have already solved for. When you solve for layer two, all you're doing is solving for these edges here. Okay. Um, so let's see, let's find one. So the, the permutation of movements we're gonna use this time is gonna always move this position, QB, to this position. So as we can see, we need, so if we wanna solve for this one, we need orange and blue. So let's see, all right, so there we go. We've kinda of gotten lucky here because when we do this, it's gonna move just in that position except just here meaning the orientation of the QB. So orange will be here and then actually blue will be out. So we'll have to run through to, we'll have to run through the permutation twice to uh, put it there and then pull it out and then bring it back just to turn that around. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. So for this one, this is gonna be an up inverse, left inverse, up, left, up, face, up inverse, face inverse. So as we can see, that put it in there for sure, but it's in the wrong position. So now we're gonna have to uh, to fix that. So then how do we fix that? We just do the same permutation a couple times. So up inverse, left inverse, up, left, up, face, up inverse, face inverse. So now that pulls the cube back out, the QB, but now it's in the right orientation to go into this slot. So now all we have to do is simply do that again. So up inverse, left inverse, up left, up, face, up inverse, face inverse. 
And voila, look at that. So that guy solved, he's in there. Okay, so now we just need to do the same thing for this guy. So here we're lucky because red, blue, and it's in the right position because this will slide right in there. So we just go up inverse, left inverse, up, left, up, face, up inverse, face inverse. And then we're almost there. We almost have layer two solve for. So now what we need to do is put green, red in there. So this one's, the orientation's wrong. So we're gonna have to do it three times. Best step on up is up inverse, inverse, up, left, up, face, up inverse, face, face inverse, okay? So now, it's in there. So I'll put this is the wrong color, so we're getting the wrong orientation. So once again, up inverse, up inverse, up, left, up, face, up inverse, face inverse. That pulls it back out, we have to go find it. Now it's in the right position, as you can see. So now just simply one more, up inverse, up inverse, up, left, up, face, up inverse, face inverse. And now, as you can see, we have solved for layer two. We're almost there, guys. Okay, so for layer three, which is the final layer, and for a lot of people, this is the most tricky layer, this is layer three, because you want to be careful not to scramble anything in the first two layers we've already solved for. So the first step is we need to um, establish a cross pattern similar to how we started with layer one, except we need to be able to do this up here um without disturbing the lower layers so the, the permutation of movements is, is a little different here um but let's see so first thing we want to do in the permutation we're going to use is actually going to move these center the edge pieces here and it, it's going to work out work out that as i'm holding the cube whichever uh QB is in this position will not move with this the permutation I'm about to do, but these will move around. So what we want to do is we're going to pick one. Wow, look at that. It just so happens that every one of these, <laughs> the yellow, which is the final face color, is facing out towards us. Um, so but what we're going to do about that is we're going to pick one that's in position. At least it's in the right spot. So blue, so we need to move these around so that orange is in orange's position. So to put that another way, we're going to move red to here and then red to here. And when we do that, blue and orange will come around. And then orange will be, is out of sequence, as you can imagine, because it goes red, orange, blue. These are out of sequence. So we'll have to pivot the cube at some point and then fix the sequence. So let's go ahead and prepare to do that. Okay, so as we start the new sequence, we're gonna go ahead and leave the QB closest to me or to you as you're holding the cube. Since that's in the right face position, even though it's in the wrong orientation, we're gonna leave it there and we're gonna start with a new permutation to move these around. So this one is going to be a right, up, right, inverse, up, right, two ups, right, inverse. So as you see, when I did that, none of the lower layers changed, which is good. The green stayed in the, the position where that QB is going to end up ultimately, but the these three changed positions. So we're going to do that one more time so we can get red here and blue there orange where it belongs so so one more and i always like to reset my cube because i kind of leave it off kilter a little bit but that's going to be once again right up right inverse up right two ups and right inverse all right now if i did it right hey look bottom two layers are still in good good position uh this guy is in the right position, orange, yellow, yes. Blue, yellow, good position. Red, yellow, good position, and green, yellow. So now all we have to do is work on correcting the orientation. Okay, so to correct those colors, the orientation of the edge colors, I'm gonna go back and um, let's see if 
we use the cross algorithm to fix this. So what that looks like is front, right, up, right, up, front, inverse. Okay. And then just pivot it around. This guy. And we'll just keep going. So we're gonna do front, right, up, front, inverse, up, inverse, front, inverse. Okay, bottom layer is still good. And we'll see front, right, up, front, up, front. Still quite heavy uh, the cross head. Front, right, up. Front. So that's the bar, so that's good. And I think from here, we can just do another front, right, up, right. There we go. So we're in good position. Well, we're in good orientation. And it appears that we have one that's out of whack. So we're gonna go back and fix that. Okay, and so to solve some of these, the, the QB placement errors that we have in the, the last layer here, layer three, as you can see, red and green are out of order. So really, the way I look at it when I'm looking down the cube is I think that green needs to be in front of red, and that way red's over here when we reposition it. So to do that, I'm gonna leave the red QB in this position here, and then I'm going to go ahead and do our right, up, right, up, right, two, three, right. And then the box later is still intact. That's good news. Uh, and now, as you can see, we've got the edges done. Okay, so we have the cross, we have the edges. So now all we need to do is solve for the corners. Okay, so when we take a look at solving the corners in layer three, we take note that we have orientation problems and we have position problems. So for instance, this QB has an orientation problem, but it's in the right position. As you can see, it's blue, orange, yellow. So we just need to change the orientation. Um, this QE is obviously in the wrong position because it's green, red, yellow, and it's in the corner of blue, red, and yellow. So we're gonna use a different permutation that'll actually shift around the corner pieces and the same as before, or similar to before, not the same, but what you wanna do is, once again, what's facing you, this way, it's facing me, um, you put in this corner, this will be the piece that will not move with this next set of moves. So we wanna find the piece that is correct, even though the orientation's wrong, so that's this guy. You put that in the lower right-hand side, looking down on the cube, and then you get ready to start running your permutations. So this guy, this needs to come here. So this red blue needs to come to red blue. And this uh, red green needs to come here. So basically we should, in one set of uh, moves, we should be able to move these three pieces around. And this will stay the same. So let's go ahead and do that now. And this set of moves is gonna be an up, right, up inverse, left inverse, up, right inverse, up inverse, left. Okay, so we did it correctly. The bottom two layers are still intact. Then we do a, a position check. We've got green, orange. Here we've got blue, orange. Here, that one's solved for. And then this one's in the right position. So here's the final step which is, in my opinion, it's a little unnerving and I'll show you why. So to solve for the, the orientation problems that we have left, which are just in these three positions, it's that same base algorithm of moves. 
So this is the RI, DI, R, D, RI, DI, R, D, RI, DI, R, D, RI, DI, R, D. So you always want to finish your move set and notice this is now in the right position, right? So I'm very careful when I'm holding this my cue because if I lose orientation here, it might kind of mess up my solve here. So, but you want to keep what was facing you as facing you. But once it's solved for, then all you do is pivot the top, then continue with your permutation. R I B I R D R I B I R D R I B I R D R I D Okay, always finish your sequence. We have this one solved for now. Now this is getting squirrely down here, but this is the part I was talking about that makes me nervous. So we'll try to ignore that for now. Keep the red facing you. Pivot the cube one more time. R I D I R D R I D I R D R I D I R D R I D I R D and Ladies and gentlemen, we've done it. We were able to do something I could never do as a kid without <laughs> tearing it apart. But there you have it. We've solved the Rubik's Cube. So hopefully you guys found this entertaining and helpful. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.